and call upon his name. The Bible says that call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and unsearchable things. Praise the name of the Lord. Things that you do not know, things that are beyond our imagination. These things are God when we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I believe that by the end of these three days, we are going to experience supernatural blessings. We are going to experience great and wondrous things. Things that we even never imagined. Praise the name of the Lord. As I was coming, I was thinking about prayer and the people who pray. And I thought about the cold that we are having. You know, when you get outside there, it's really cold. Once you get inside here, it's warm. And I thought that whatever is warm in this house is hidden somewhere, maybe in the basement. You don't see the, the heating system. Praise the name of the Lord. But in that secret place, whatever is happening in the secret place, we can experience the fruits. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the way we are. People who pray, you don't need to be seen. You don't need to be known. But the work you do in the secret, it affects even generations to come. And that is why prayer is important. Praise the name of the Lord. And I thank God because of the theme of this conference. I was thinking about it when I was praying. And the Lord just put something in my heart. That this theme is when you pray. Not if you pray. Not if you happen to pray. Or if you think you can pray. It is when you pray. Because it is not a choice. It is not a surprise to God. We are expected to pray. It is a requirement to pray. Praise the name of the Lord. And yesterday the man of God laid a great foundation that when we pray, say, our Father. It is all about a relationship. Praise the name of the Lord. And so today I'm going to continue building on that. When you pray, what are we supposed to do? When we Pray. And we are going to read the word of the Lord uh, from the theme of this conference in the book of First Kings chapter 18. I'm going to start from verse 41. First Kings chapter 18. I'm starting from verse 41. It is all about when we pray. Amen. What are we supposed to do when we pray? Because the Lord requires us to pray. We are expected to pray. It is not optional. It is not a choice. It is a requirement. We are supposed to pray. Amen. First Kings chapter 18, and I'll start from 41. And if you're there, say amen. 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 And Elijah said to Ahab, Go up, eat, and drink, for there is a sound of the rushing of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel. And he bowed himself down on the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said to his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. And at the seventh time he said, Behold, a little cloud like a man's hand is rising from the sea. And he said, Go up, said to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and go down, lest the rain stop you. And in a little while the heavens grew black with clouds and wind, and there was great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he gathered up his garment and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor when we pray. Amen. If there is someone I really admire in the Bible is Elijah. This guy does not even have a biography. We don't know who was his mother. We don't know who was his father. But this man did things in his time that made him enter into this book of records. The Bible says that Elijah the Tishibite. The first time you see about Elijah, it's just Elijah the Tishibite. I don't know whether Tishibite, Tishib is where he lived or it is his clan or what. But when he made an entrance... It is like he came out of nowhere. Praise the name of the Lord. And it is because the zeal of the Lord had consumed him. If you continue reading in chapter 19, he says that the zeal of the Lord has consumed me. It is the zeal of the Lord that had consumed him. It pushed him not to continue hiding, but to 
should stand out and do something for the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. It was a time when everybody had been led by Jezebel to worship Baal and to divert worship unto God. And Elijah stood up and decided it is time we get these people's attention. It is time that I know there is a God above who is more powerful, who is the only true God, who is able to do more than they can even think. And he knew, you know what? I, I, I'm going to say something on behalf of God. I am God's ambassador. I am going to stand up and speak. And Elijah stood up and said one thing. He said, by my word. Tell your neighbor, by my word. It is not that he prayed and said, God says, amen. And you tell your neighbor, it's also good to say your word. It's not every time you say God says. You know, some people say God says when God has not said. It is also good to say what you want to say. If you're saying it on behalf of God. Praise the name of the Lord. This man showed up and said, By my word it shall not rain. Three years and a half. And the guy disappeared. And true to his word, it did not rain. I don't want to go to the whole story, but Elijah's story is very interesting. Of how the Lord sustained him in the time of drought. And after three and a half years, he shows up and says, Now, you know what? Uh, you have been trying to bring rain. It didn't come because I had said it's not going to come. But for us to bring a difference, we have to be on one line. When the ball is God, we will serve God. If God is God, we are going to serve God. Praise the name of the Lord. And you all know about how they went to Mount Carmel and how God showed up and how God answered Elijah by fire. And you think that now the fire is there and he has destroyed the prophets of Baal. That Elijah would now sit back and enjoy the celebrity of the time. But this guy remembers. I say there will be no rain. I need to go to God and tell God, now God, we agreed no rain. <laughs> it didn't rain. Now we have, I have come, we make another agreement. We need rain now. Praise the name of the Lord. And this is where I want us to understand when we pray. The Bible says in verse 41 that Elijah first sent a, a message. Told Ahab, go and uh, told Ahab, there is a sound of mighty rain. I can hear the sound of rushing rain. Elijah did not go blindly to God. He already knew what he wants from the Lord. And he already had that conception of what he really wants. So, number one, when we pray, we really need to go to the Lord, understanding what we want. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not guesswork. He was not saying, I think it might rain. He already had the conviction. He already saw it in the spiritual world. That what I want is the rain I can hear in the spiritual world. I want that rain to shine. I want that rain to shower down. I want that rain to pour down. I can hear it in the spirit. But for it to be manifested in the physical, I have to do something about it. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell your neighbor, he fast had it in the spirit. So when we pray, let's not just go blindly. I, I want this, I want that, I want that. You have to know what you're praying. And have a conviction. He is not praying with any doubt. I want you to see the faith of this man. He is not trying to cut deals with God. He is proclaiming what he is going to do. He needs rain. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says, So Ahab went and ate and drank. Amen. I know I'm speaking to people who make prophetic declarations. And sometimes we make prophetic declarations and to the people we prophesy to or like the way we have come to the city of law, we are going to make prophetic declarations and let me tell you people are going to sit back, eat and drink. But there need to be people who are the powerhouse who are going to back up on the prophecy until it is manifested. This guy says it is going to rain. I hear the sound of the mighty rain. And guess what Ahab does? He is the king, but he is busy eating and drinking. Because prayer is a calling. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You might be the one who has been called in your family to stand in the gap. And you tend to say that God is going to bless us. God is going to bless us. And nobody tells you, even your mother does not tell you, can we pray about it? You are the one with the vision. Tell your neighbor, you're the one with the vision. Follow it. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that another thing that Elijah did. He went.
went up to the top of Mount Carmel. He decided, now I'm going to move from the level of the ordinary people. I'm going to move from the level of those who are eating and drinking like everything is okay. I am going to go to a raised level. I will go up to the mountain. He changed the position. He knew how much influence it could be if he continued with Ahab. He could also start eating and drinking. Praise the name of the Lord. But he moved to a higher position. He decided, I am going to separate myself. I'm going to set myself apart. I am not going to mingle with those who think that everything is okay. Praise the name of the Lord. When we pray, know your position. Tell your neighbor, know your position. Yeah, it is not everywhere where you can pray. And that is why even the Lord was saying, when you pray, get into your prayer closet. Amen. Don't go to the to the market to the market and just display faces of like you are playing. And let and make everybody know that you are you are praying. Praise the name of the Lord. Elijah went up to the Mount Carmel. Up there. And the Bible says that he knelt down and put his head between his knees. Praise the name of the Lord. I was trying to figure out that position that Elijah assumed. And I believe that he just bowed down and he could not see anything else but just have a concentration to what he is telling the Lord. He chose not to look around. He decided, I am going to have time with the Lord. He put his head between his knees. Praise the name of the Lord. There are some people who say that that is the position. I don't know whether we are so much mixed up, but I will say this. That is the position of giving birth. Praise the name of the Lord. That is the position of traveling. It is the position of concentrating. I want to give birth. I want to bring to life. I want to bring forth. And for those who are women like me, when it is time to labor, you don't care who is there. You don't care where you are. You don't care whether you're screaming or you're just quiet there. You just want to push. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. When we pray, let us not be diverted. Let us remain focused on what we want to bring forth. He needed rain. He needed rain. He needed rain. And listen, he told the servant, go and check. Go and check whether the rain is coming. And the first time this guy comes and tells him, nothing. I can see nothing. And I was reading this and I've read it many times and I always feel like a, a, a great, he, this guy has a great strategy. He tells him, you know what? Go back seven times. Go back seven times. It's like he did here. When we pray, we might not get instant results. We are living in an era of instant. Instant coffee, instant everything, instant everything. Ah, oatmeal. <laughs> instant. Everything is instant. Praise the name of the Lord. And brethren, many people have turned prayer into that first world, yeah? But you just want to drive through and get your blessing, yeah? Drive through and grab your miracle on your way to where you're going. But the Bible says that this guy was determined even if he was told nothing. I can see nothing. I can see nothing. Can you imagine the same guy bringing the same report seven times, six times? I can see nothing. But this guy is not taking his head where he blessed it. He continued praying. He continued pursuing. He continued pushing because he knew I have heard the sound of a rushing wind. I have heard the sound of mighty waters. Amen. I have come to encourage you today when you pray. It doesn't matter how many years you pray. There are some things you pray even for 10 years, you pray for 20 years. But the problem is when you quit and listen to those voices that say, what is the use of praying in there? Nothing is, nothing is happening. 
and it happens like that your neighbor gets the blessing you've been praying for. It's like, I don't know what's wrong with God. I've been praying for so long and God gave it to her, not to me. Praise the name of the Lord. Remain focused. Praise the name of the Lord. And the Bible says that the, at last this guy comes in with good news. And the good news were like, I have seen a cloud the size of a man's fist. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. This guy in the spirit, he had the sound of mighty rain. But the results that this servant brings is that I have seen a cloud the size of a man's fist. Now, if that is going to rain, <laughs> I think it's just going to be a drop in the sea. But listen to what this man did. When the sign was revealed, he did not continue putting his head between his knees. He started preparing. He started preparing. He told the servant, go and tell Ahab now the rain is coming. And I'm sure this servant was like, I, I told, did you hear me right? It is the size of a, it is the size of a fist and and no, serving Elijah, he didn't have to ask questions, but I believe this guy had so many questions. How can the size of a fist cloud be my terrain? But this man of God knew God has heard. I have seen a sign. I will not continue being here. It is time to prepare because what I've been praying for has been answered. And when Jesus was telling the disciples about prayer, he told them, when you pray, whatever you pray, believe that you have it, and you shall have it. Amen. Believe that you have it, and you shall. Amen. So it is all about faith. It is all about believing. There is nothing dangerous than a prayer warrior who has no faith. He undoes what he had done over the years. When God gives you a sign, you are asking, is it you, Lord? Is it you, Lord? Because sometimes we want God to come in, his, in the way we have already strategized. Like we already have a way he should pass. When he passes the other way, you are like, is it you? Is it you? And you undo the prayers of many years. The prayers that you have prayed for a long time. This guy tells the servant, tell Ab, get ready. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And Ahab knew that when it is the man of God saying, the moment that Elijah started preparing, the Bible says that there were black crowds and mighty wind. It did not just happen. If he remained on his knees, Maybe it could have grown gradually or even the fist disappeared. But when he started acting, it is like telling God, I believe you are up to something. And now I am ready to see what you are ready to do. I am prepared to enter into that level. Hey. He did not worry that I don't have a chariot. The Bible says that he gathered his garments. He was ready to run because rain Praise the name of the Lord. Today I want us to, I'm not going to speak for long because I want us to pray. But I want us to pray by faith. And when you pray by faith and act it, pray by faith and act. When the Lord shows up a sign, be prepared. For what the Lord is true. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I remember one time. From when I was a little girl. The Lord had been speaking over my life. About my ministry. And how I travel all over the world. Preaching the gospel. I want to share this. So that we get into prayer. 
And I believed that one day I'll travel all over the world. But it so happened when the time came for me to start traveling, I got invitations. I couldn't travel because I didn't have a passport. And I couldn't get a passport because I didn't have a bad certificate. And I tried getting a bad certificate, I tried getting a bad certificate for two years, struggling to get a bad certificate. But one day, I was sitting in the office and the Lord spoke to me and told me it is time. I had an invitation to go speak in Rwanda. And the Lord told me it is time. I looked at my ID and the Lord spoke to me. I had been trying to get the birth certificate in the wrong place. That very day I took action. I looked at my ID and I decided I am going to go to the place where this ID says I was born. It is a place I, I think my mother just traveled there and gave birth to. I had never been to that town or anything. And that day I told the secretary I am going to Nyahururu, that's the name of the town, and I'll be back. The moment I got there, somebody recognized me and told me, I have come here because I need a birth certificate. And this person told me, Pastor, don't worry, we'll take care of that. Something I had tried to get for two years, I got it within two hours, and the time came. Praise the name of the Lord. When you pray, and the Lord gives you a sign, act on the sign. That is where our prayers have, have been made nothing. Because when God gives you a sign, you are still there telling the Lord, if it is you, oh God. Who are, who are you praying to? If it's when he gives you a sign, you are then saying, if it is you. Praise the name of the Lord. I want us to have a clear direction. Elijah did not go blindly. He went to the Lord and knew I started something. I said it will not rain. Now it is time for rain. And I shall bring forth rain by prayer and traveling in the presence of the Lord. I don't know what you have been praying for. But this night, I want us to pray. I don't know how many times people have told you we see nothing. But that guy was coming every time it's nothing. You said there is rain. Oh, nothing. The, the sky is? Yeah. The sky is clear. Oh, you say you're getting married. Oh, and how old are you now? <laughs> the sky is? You say you're going to school. And how many years have you been out of school? The sky is still? Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you have had. It is nothing. But we need to remain focused. Put your head on your knees and declare until I see it I am not quitting Amen. it doesn't matter what I hear I will maintain the first sound I heard the sound of the rushing rain that is the sound I will maintain every other sound that is negative is just going to pass since it's nothing I'm like I'm waiting for the sound of the mighty rain you are saying nothing I'm waiting for the sound of the mighty rain. And how does rain come? It starts by clouds. If, I, if there is a cloud at the size of the feast of man, my rain is here. I'm ready now to enjoy the rain. I am ready now to move because the rain is coming. Amen. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. I want us to enter into prayer. And I want us to be very specific. I want you to be very specific. And because I'm sure we're going to hear testimonies of this practice, this action we're going to take today, I want you to be very specific. We are going to travel in the presence of the Lord. We are going to call for that which has been in the spiritual realm. We were told yesterday, we were, everything was explained about the spirit in the spiritual realm and where we are right now. Unless we call those things that are in the spiritual realm and they be manifested in the physical, we will continue living, saying we belong to God, we are children of God, and people look at us and they don't even admire our God, they don't even want to be associated with Him. And the problem is not God, but the problem is us. The Bible 
says that we reign with Christ in the heavenly places. We have been blessed with every spiritual gift in the heavenly places. It is our time to call them forth and believe that they are going to be manifested. And when the manifestation comes, hallelujah, when the Lord starts manifesting your blessing, can you walk like a blessed man? Can you live like a blessed man? Can you live like somebody who has been remembered? Can you show it that the Lord has done it for you? Hallelujah. Because sometimes the Lord does it and you don't quit complaining. The Lord has given it to you, but you're still there. Like the children of Israel, they used to have manna every day. I envy the women of those days. They didn't have to prepare meals. All they had to do is give everybody a bowl, go outside, collect to your field, or whatever you want, whatever you eat from your hands. I don't care. But those people still complained. They never saw that the Lord was sustaining them. And you know what? They didn't have to go buy clothes. As they grew, the clothes grew with them. The shoes grew with them. They were sustained for 40 years, but they never saw. Praise the name of the Lord. For our prayer life to be an example, to be something that will shine out to others when he does it. Stop staying with your testimony. Stop hiding there like you don't want to share it. It is not for you. When God does it for you, it is not for you. It is for you to leave it and tell it to encourage others to continue praying for God to do it for them. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to pray. I'm saying I want us to pray and be specific. I don't know what is that that you want the Lord to do. I don't know what is that you've been traveling for years. It doesn't matter how many years you've been traveling. The fact is when we pray by faith. Because the Bible says in Hebrews 11 and verse 6 that without faith we can never please God. And those who go to the Lord must believe that he is. When you're going there, that's why it is wrong to ask God whether it is that he's the one. Because the fact that you went to him, the first qualification is that you must believe that he is. And he is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And the Bible says that Elijah was just a man like us. This guy had flesh and blood like you have. But he prayed a fervent prayer. He prayed without wavering. He was steadfast. This is what we want. As I finish up, there's a story of one man in Korea. He's a founder of the Full Gospel Churches. And I read from his book that one time he was praying and telling God, God, give me a table. Because he had a house that had no table and he had a hard time reading and preparing the sermon. So he used, he used to tell God, give me a table, a chair, and a bicycle so that he may be able to walk around, I mean, ride around and go meet people as he ministered. And he kept praying and praying. And one day God asked him, you keep asking for a table. You keep asking for a bicycle. You keep asking for a chair. Do you know how many tables are there in the world? Which one do you want? Which bicycle do you want? Which chair do you want? And this guy got a revelation. He calls it the fourth dimension. He discovered that God has no problem with blessing him, but he has a problem with knowing exactly which one he really wants. And so he started visualizing what kind of a bicycle I want, what kind of a table I want, what kind of a chair I want. And he went to church one day and he told them, God has blessed me with a table, with a chair, and a bicycle. And after church, everybody was excited. And they wanted to go to pastor's house and see the blessing. And when they were on the way, he was wondering, what am I going to tell them? I can just see them in the spirit. I now know which table I want, but I don't have it yet. And so when the brothers went to his house and asked, Pastor, are you a liar? Where is the table? Where is the chair? He said, you know what? When a child is conceived, what does a woman say? Huh? Uh-huh. Uh, with a? With a baby. 
Amen. 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 So it will, you know what? The chair, the bicycle, <laughs> the table, they are in here. Amen. Amen. When you conceive, the baby does not become a baby when the, when the baby is born. But from conception, it's a baby. Yes. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And after a time, for sure, God blessed him with a bicycle. And that man, he has lived praying that way. Specific prayers. Because God has no problem with blessings. But we really need to be specific with him. Exactly what we want. Over the city of law because we came. And I thank God for this corporate anointing. Because we came. What we want to see. Can you visualize what we want to see? Can you visualize the manifestation of God we want to see? And then when we are praying for it to be manifested, we are not going to be confused because we know what we want to see. Amen. Let's stand up before the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I must pray. Instrument guys, just come over and I'm sure that we are going to pray. We are going to pray. And today I just want you to be very specific because we shall give testimonies. I know every time I've been specific with the Lord, I have seen the manifestation of God answering. And when the answer comes, I'm not confused because I know I prayed for this. I know it is what I asked for from the Lord. I'm not there asking, is it you, God? Did you give me this? When he does, I know because that is what I had prayed. Father, we give you praise. Just open your mouth and just go before the Lord and start telling God what you want. What is that one? What is that prophecy that was spoken over your life? What is that thing that you have always desired to see? What is it are you expecting? I have a desire to see the promised glory of the latter church. What is it that you are expecting from the Lord? We are going to call upon the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter how many times you have had discouraging voices. It doesn't matter how many times it has been seeming like you're doing nothing. But today we are believing God. Just like Elijah believed. He believed that there is one rain coming. And he continued traveling and declaring that we want rain. We want rain. Lord, open the heavens. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. And he continued and he Persistent and for sure, there was the rushing mighty way, just like he had seen that in the spiritual. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we take power and authority. We stand up in there for guidance of our Lord through the belt of truth. We take that blessing in the embracement of righteousness. We show them our feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. We take the helmet of salvation, the shield of faith, and the sword of the and we declare that we got power, we got authority, and right now in Jesus' name, we proclaim our blessing, we proclaim our inheritance in the spiritual places. Your word says, Give of our glory, that salvation belongs to us and the people of our households. And right now, in the name of Jesus, we release the men that are tied up in captivity, we release the women that are. Jesus name. 
We give you praise, oh God. We give you praise, oh God. We give you glory. Hallelujah.